Hi, this is Adi Olvera. I'm with the California Election Integrity Coalition here in Tiburon, California. I'm very excited to be here with an amazing group of election integrity advocates, activists, um, who have been fighting their whole life to protect our vote. And we have an amazing conference coming tomorrow, Take Back the Vote, um, in Richmond, California for two days, October 8th and 9th, Saturday and Sunday. We'd love to see you um, from 9.30 registration till 5 p.m. in this additional bonus social hour uh, where we can get to know each other better and then go back on Sunday to the conference and listen to some more expert, experts tell us about how to uh, get back our election um, systems and process back in order because uh, all of us who participate in the primary know how insane that was and we want uh, our votes back so um, I'm going to introduce you to Lucy Riley, who is with uh, Ballots for Bernie and also our, one of our co-founding members of the California Election Integrity Coalition. And um, she is going to introduce us to all our guest speakers today. Hi, folks. We're so glad you could tune in this evening. This is Lucy Riley with Ballots for Bernie. And have we got a special hour on live stream planned for you. So once again, here we are talking about election integrity. We need transparency in the system. Our most precious right is the right to vote in this country. People have died and fought their whole lives for this precious right to vote. And it is our mandate as US citizens to make sure that every ballot is counted as cast. We're so happy to have John Brakey here with us. Um, Bob Petrakis, and again, Lori Grace. We can't interview Lori Grace enough. We're so happy that she has opened up her home for us um, to talk about um, our conference that's happening this weekend and talk about some really inspiring um, things that are happening. This is the progressive front of the election integrity movement. So um, what we wanna do is we want to ask John and Bob and Lori to talk to us about the seminal moment in their lives that erected their backbones and made them stand up and engage in feet in the street activism um, to ensure transparency in the system um, where they live. So, John, we are going to start off with you, and you have got such a powerful human interest story to share with us, and I am so excited for our viewers to hear it. Take it away, John. Well, uh, I want to thank, of course, Lori for hosting all of us here, and, and, uh, and you know, uh, I am an election integrity, uh, but more I like to say I'm a transparency activist, and I fight for transparency. And I think that the moment that really, you know, got me woken up was uh, November 7, 2004. I was a cluster captain and I had four precincts. And I saw how, how sort of Jim Crow laws work and how it was a Mexican type community that I was living in because my wife's Mexican. And it was very heartbreaking to see people who, who were being disenfranchised because they'd say, oh gee, you voted, a, uh, voted by mail. And then you said, no, you didn't. And they said, well, don't worry, you can vote a provisional. And it was a trick yeah, and switch of vote. Many times we hear that. And it was right. a game that was going on. And, and, and from there, I hooked up with a Dr. Uh, uh, Griscom, and we spent a thousand dollars, a thousand hours analyzing everything. <laughs> you wish you could have just spent a thousand dollars. Oh, I know. I wish. <laughs> I wish I could have. Wow. But a thousand hours, that. and That's then finally we came up with the fact that I needed to get a hold of Bev Harris mm -hmm. and talk to her because I realized that what I found was a stack and everything else was around was being hacked. Right. Because mm -hmm. if there was an audit, you can come audit this. We got it set up for you. Mm -hmm. And they had put a special crew of people in. And I remember that day very, very well. Because when I realized what I found that, for, that election day, I remember sitting on a curb and I started crying and I said, God, why me? Yeah. I knew my life had changed. I yeah. knew that this is what I was gonna do. And here I am 12 years later, with some really distinguished people yeah. who uh, realize that uh, what we do is can make a difference. Yes. And, and I hope that other people can follow what we're doing yeah. and learn from us because uh, this is a fight that's gonna go on for a while. Yeah, yeah. Let's set the tone. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's model behavior that folks all over the country can easily put into play where they're living and not feel helpless, not feel paralyzed, yeah. be able to step forward and be part of this election integrity movement. Yeah. And with that, I say seven things go with it. Yeah. Character, capacity, credibility, civility, country, citizenship. But you know what the most important C is? What is that? Courage. It takes courage. It takes courage to, to challenge forward. the system. Yes, it does. John, could you talk to our viewers a little bit about what stacking the boat means? Well, gee, it it's, uh, happens a lot. Happened in California. Okay, it happened in Arizona. Stacking the vote is a, in a California method, which was the, the biggest heist, as Bob pointed out the other day on the show he was on. Arizona and California did set the pace for the most outrageous thefts that had happened. Mm -hmm. And stacking is this way, is that they pretty much know because of a presidential election, because of Google, Facebook, because they broke into the database of Van and they knew who the donors were, mm -hmm. that they could say, well, you're a Hillary voter and we're going to count your vote at first. And, you know, in California on election night, you know, I... Uh, I watch elections very intensely, especially the opening vote counts, because you know they're all pure vote by mail. Mm -hmm. Hillary in Arizona was up 26 points, mm -hmm. okay? And then the next day, when the uh, next morning, when the precinct vote finally came in, and it was, she was only up 13, and instantly I knew they did an Arizona game. Mm -hmm. Because uh, vote by mail, a lot of times, is not sorted except inside of a computer in Arizona. Right. Here, it is sorted. So what they had to do was to direct the Hillary people, your vote's going to count today. Mm -hmm. Your Sanders, we're going to count your vote later, after we do the lotto in this state to figure out what they're going to pick. So basically, in California, you had a stack on your vote by mail up front. Then at the precinct vote, two and a half million people vote on a Democratic ticket, went in to vote. 550,000 were forced into provisional ballots to be counted later, okay? That's the strip that you eloquently write about in your book. They strip people by saying, oh, gee, we got you registered as this, or you're a libertarian. No, I'm not. Well, you have to vote a provisional, we'll figure it out later, okay? Well, election day's over, they decide, let's pull the drawing to see what we're gonna count. Well, they analyze 65% of the vote. The other 35% of the vote is easily, could be done with fraction magic. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Right. And tune in because we're going to be talking about Fraction Magic, but you got to tune into the live stream for the conference to get that, folks. Little tease. Thanks for that. Thank you. John, thank you so much for sharing that powerful story about well, what made you step forward and be part of this movement. Um, we're looking for big things coming out of uh, your neck of the woods in the right. future. Yeah. Thank you. So, folks, you can follow um, what is happening um, on John's website. Yes. And Facebook page. Share yep. some of that information. Well, uh, my site uh, is electionnightmares.com because it is a nightmare. That says it all, doesn't and, it? Uh, but, you know, every four years I do change it up a little bit because it is a campaign. You want to re-energize. And, uh, you know, I'm always Audit AZ, which is an acronym for Americans United for Democracy, Integrity, and Transparency mm -hmm. in Election, which came out of that trick and switch back in 2004. Right. And, uh, and, and that's how you keep it fresh. Sure, sure. Is there a Facebook page that I put to Absolutely, as well? uh, is that I have a Facebook page called Audit AZ. And also people are very welcome to join my personal Facebook page because I use it for elections. Right. And that's John Roberts Brakey. Roberts with an S, Brakey, B-R-A-K-E-Y, a break with a Y. Right. And folks, we hope that you follow what John's doing in Arizona. And let's see if it works in your state. Okay, so next we've got our dear friend, Bob Petrakis, who has agreed to be our um, MC at our conference this weekend. And Bob is a mover and shaker in this movement. And uh, Bob, um, you shared with us earlier um, a powerful story about how you came into the election integrity <coughs> movement and what um, your heartfelt desire was to see change. Share that with us. Well, in the 2004 election, I had volunteered to be an election protection attorney, not anticipating that uh, in the inner city of Columbus, in the majority black uh, precincts, and uh, there were 42 of them, 
uh, the machines went mis missing. Mm -hmm. uh, quite literally, there's a movie about it called American Blackout. Wow. Yeah. Someone came along with a pen and <laughs> blacked out the serial numbers of these machines, Great. which meant uh, they couldn't be put out. Mm -hmm. But uh, luckily for us, they were circling the city in rental trucks <laughs> in case there was an emergency. Like someone, you know, there could have been in the suburb some white person who might have had to wait in line 15 minutes and that would have probably constituted <laughs> an emergency. Yeah. So uh, I, I run the free press, this newspaper there. So I had sent out free press reporters, you know, we, we have a staff, uh, you know, they don't get paid well, they're all, they're all contract workers, but we got about 20 reporters. And I said, call in, and I, I'm getting these calls, Worthington, Ohio, 15 minutes, Upper Arlington, 17 minutes. And then I'm observing the inner cities, the three to seven hours. And it's a cold rain, one of those numbing Ohio, barely above uh, freezing and sleeting, chill to the bone ra uh, rains. People are out, you know, the lines are three, four hours long. And in one of these lines, there was a, um, a woman, an elderly black woman, who was in the line, in the line, right around five hours or so. She faints, hits her head. And uh, of course, I see this, and I went in as an attorney and demanded she be given under law curbside voting. And they pretty much told me to kiss off. They weren't going to wow. do it. And, uh, and, I, and I watched her recover. And, she wanted to stay the vote, but she couldn't. So very unsteadily, she walks away with a cane. And at that, you know, it's one of those things where you, you know, swear an oath to God that somebody yeah. will pay yeah. uh, for that. I didn't know how. All I knew is I was really mad and I was going to do something. And then fortunately, the oddest thing, two days later, I was a fill-in. Um, I had written an article uh, about the old woman and the vote. And this was not a white suburban experience. Mm -hmm. This had happened in the inner city. Mm -hmm. And somebody had read it at a Unitarian Universalist church and they invited me. I got a PhD in political science as well as a JD. So we went there and they were talking about the election. And I started telling these stories. People are going, yeah, it's not part of our white experience. I mean, how could this happen? And afterwards, a guy I've never seen in my life and I like to tell people he looked exactly like Eugene Victor Debs, the great right. socialist. <laughs> yes, Eugene Debs. <laughs> this guy walks up to me, and I'm thinking, why is Eugene Debs coming up to me? <laughs> Might have been his ghost. <laughs> Who knows? And he looks at me and goes, look, you're an attorney. If what you're saying is true, why don't you put people under oath and have public hearings? Turns around and walks away. And then little the, did he know <laughs> how deeply you were going to take that and then, these, <laughs> then these two little, uh, these two young people, they were in the 18, 19, they were in the, uh, it, was, it was all this great synchronicity. They come out and go, we, we know it happened, we saw it. And they're like really mad, right? They're angry because they were in the inner city. You know, the, the league of pissed off uh, uh, young voters. So. Right. Uh, We've got quite a go, few of those. What today. can we do? And yeah. I said, let's have public hearings. <laughs> Come to my office tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, and this is the strangest thing. I, I didn't think they'd show up. Now, they show up right on time. I'm like, oh, what do I do now? And they go, what do we do? I said, I want you to call Representative John Conyers on the phone, right? They've never called a congressman in their life. I want you to call Cliff Arnebeck, this attorney who's working with Democratic Alliance. Uh, and I gave him a list of all these congressmen to call, right? John Lewis. And then I, I go to class. I come back an hour later, and I hear this woman, very high vo uh, voice. It was like, yeah, that's right, Mr. Arnebeck. You're doing nothing. They stole the vote. And... <laughs> I go, did you get anyone? They go, yeah, Conyers is going to have hearings. I mean, they don't even know what they're, I mean, they had no idea they were doing the impossible. All they know is they were indeed pissed off and they knew it was unjust. And uh, we had the largest public hearings in the history of Ohio. We put over 500 people under That's oath, under <laughs> Alfred David. And then we had a second one with 300 people. Yeah. And, you know, it's the pattern emerged and then the uh, 
U.S. Congress, John Conyers investigated and wrote a very famous report uh, called What Happened in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, and that is the model that we want <laughs> Bernie supporters to engage with us in. We know in state after state after state that something happened. Yeah, they jacked your vote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> plain <laughs> old fashioned yeah, DNC. I mean, those emails indicate, yeah. you know, you had some, uh, you had the official neutral entity that was working against Mr. Sanders. I think it's, uh, it will be one of the greatest tragedies recorded yes. in American electoral yes. history. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we want to remind you at home. Just like these voters in Ohio came together and had the largest um, grand jury, right? Public hearing. Public hearing. With people under oath. We went out okay. and, and got, you know, and, and when we had it, we didn't know anyone was going to show up. Right? <laughs> we, we thought maybe we were just in this four precinct area that was just this hell hole. Sure. You know, it's like we, we kind of felt stuff. And when, when people showed up and they raised their hands under oath and we had the court reporter there, and uh, we're taking evidence, and the stories were just horrendous. People waiting seven hours in line and getting to the front of the line uh, at a place where there's four different precincts, then told they got to go wait seven hours in line at the next table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some of the most um, heinous uh, reports um, in the primaries here. Uh, one that breaks my heart, and I share it numerous times, I live in uh, Richmond, California, and um, we are very proud of our Richmond Progressive Alliance there. We beat uh, Chevron-backed candidates who outspent us 20 to 1 in campaign ads. We beat um, uh, five, of their can five of their candidates um, who did not put a dime of their own money into their campaign. But when you look on the back of the 8 by 10 glossies, it says, Fund, major funding by Chevron. Mm -hmm. And so RPA came out and knocked on doors and told us, told all the voters, National. this is what you need to do. You need to turn mm -hmm. over those 8 by 10 glossies and you need to see where it says major funding by Chevron. And as proud as we are of what we've accomplished in Richmond, in the Democratic primary, we had precincts that were largely Latino um, attended precincts with reports of not one Spanish-speaking poll worker. Mm -hmm. That's abysmal. It is. That in the, in the hotbed of progressive politics, we can have that going on. Welcome so that's what we're asking for, folks. We are asking for you to join us. We want to hear your complaints. Come on the live stream. Tell us what your complaint was in uh, the primary in your state. Let us know. We can address these questions today. We've got some great information. Bob, thank you so much for telling us that story. Everybody's got a seminal moment that erects their backbones and puts them on the route to becoming an election integrity activist that's in this movement, and we want you to join us. So next, we've got one of our favorite people, Lori Grace, who's going to talk to us about what was your seminal, mo seminal moment that made you get involved in this movement. and. Lori has been such um, an integral force in helping move this, take this movement forward. And please share with us what that moment was for you, Lori. Well, actually, it occurred in 2003 when I, uh, uh, when I was approached by Russ Baker that was they were going to make a film called Hacking Democracy. But then there was already another film out called The Year 2000 Election. And I watched that first, and I had this profound sinking feeling, oh my God, the presidency was done as a theft in the year 2000, and it was a computer theft. And I, I've always believed in my country, and now I'm seeing the very presidency was, it was elected by theft. And I just felt a lot of dismay. I also felt a lot of dismay for um, all these people that were uh, compared with felon lists right. and, and, and the rigging and uh, the Secretary of State, Catherine Harris, from Florida. And then a friend of mine downloaded uh, the GEM software onto my computer. 
for the California um, election between um